This is the original pin punisher. I've been bowling all my life. Professional bowling is my passion, and now I'm here to share it with you. What's up guys? We're back with another training video. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to practice and actually get better and not just bowl and bowl and bowl and get no results. One of the biggest mistakes professional bowlers, amateur bowlers, bowlers make is they worry about their score when they practice and what it does is it distracts you. And here's why. Let's say, you know, you might be beating your high score, or you might tie your high score, and you're not even realizing it, you're just practicing on your thing, and then all of a sudden you look up and you're like, dang it, I didn't get my high score. Well, you know what? That's not what you're trying to be focused on here. You're trying to work on things that you're not good at, or the objective at hand. So all it does it is, is distract you. Also, Kickstart's my favorite drink. Mountain Dew, if you're out there, sponsor me. Oh, I just explained why you shouldn't uh, be focused on your score while you're trying to practice. So I'm gonna give you a little example of what might happen if you do. All right, let's focus and shoot 300, baby. Let's go. A chimney crickets, man. As you can see, you should probably focus on what you're trying to get better at and not your score. So, <laughs> yep. so some things that I'm not that great at are playing straight and up the lane, mainly because I have a high rev rate and I don't have super fast ball speed, but enough and the ball generally like overhooks on me a lot when I'm on shorter oil patterns or medium oil patterns and it sometimes forces me into the wrong you know area on the lane. So some things that I'm trying to do in order to get better at playing up the lane or playing a little bit straighter is sometimes I'm going to work on trying to kill my rev rate a little bit. Not all of it, just so, just so it'll help me get a little bit better read on being able to play straighter or I'm going to be trying to pick up my ball speed I'm going to be trying to throw it much harder to help combat my rev rate so those are a couple things that I'm going to be trying to work on you know constantly so Jordan what do you feel like you need to work on too honestly for being a two-hander I feel sometimes I have trouble swinging the ball getting it left to right um, and lofting and lofting yep okay so what do you think you're going to try to do to get better at it? Well, one, take tips from you. <laughs> um, line up left, start out maybe the first game, start swinging the ball, get some practice in, um, maybe focusing on a target and hitting the target. Okay, cool. Well, we'll, uh, we'll show you a little bit on why you should work on things that you need to get better on. All right. We're going to play a little straighter today. Well, that didn't work. I should probably work on that a little more. That was not what I expected. So one of the big things about bowling, how to get better, what to practice, why you want to practice, one of the things that I practice a lot, so it's a general thing that everybody can do, no matter whether you're two-handed, one-handed, whatever you are, is the different ways to spin your ball. Meaning like if your ball spins like this, or if it spins like this, or it spins like this, there's several different ways you can spin your ball. I'm going to teach you how to do it differently and what all of them mean. So, there are different ways that you can practice. You can do the one step drill to get it down, or you can put a piece of tape on your ball, which is what I'm going to show you, and how to see the differences. So, why do you want to change your ball roll? Because 
Uh, when you get on sport patterns or when you get on house shots and you stop caring or you don't, you know, you don't quite have the room that you're normally used to, by changing the spin on the ball, you can have more boards to hit and still result in a strike. Or if you keep leaving that pesky 10 pin, or a 7 pin, 8 pin, or 9 pin, you can adjust that ball roll and it will correct itself and it will go through the pocket better and you'll get 10 instead of 9. So, some benefits of being able to change your release or your the direction of the way, way your ball spins is you can get higher pin count, stop leaving corner pins, and you can get a little bit more room on the lane. So, it's a high road X. It's one of my trusty balls. So, generally, you know, you have people that will hold the ball like this. Okay? This is the kind of up the back release. You can see how my fingers are directly in the center of the ball. What you do is you will swing your hand like that from front to back and then you'll release it and it should spin, you know, up and down. So what if you keep doing that and you keep leaving 10 pins? The, we'll be in the, in the bowling realm, we call this forward ball roll. So forward ball roll will eventually leave 10 pins as the pattern breaks down. Now, when you want to move left, or you don't stop leaving 10 pins or seven pins, what you do is you invert your hand like this. So you see how the fingers move to the side of the ball. Still looks like this from this view. Keep on the side of the ball, have, that, have your uh, pointer finger out. And what this does is when you come through the ball, you still come through the same way, but it adds a little bit of rotation to it. And that gets the ball to finish harder in the back part of the lane. So I'm going to throw, throw two shots for you. The first one, I'm going to be going up the back. The second one, I'm going to go around it. So you'll see, this, you'll see a white piece of tape spinning on the high road going up and down and around. All right, let's go get it. As you saw, the first shot was the fingers were directly in the center and the tape was, you know, fairly in the middle of the ball. That's what you're looking for. Although there was a little bit of tilt and it wasn't directly up the back of it perfectly. But you saw by having my hand positioned like this, it went straight. Now, whenever, and, and you saw that I left a 10 pin that way. So maybe the lanes were a little too dry for that particular uh, shot. The 10 pin, what it did was the ball rolled up, and now remember, there are three phases to a bowling ball's hook. It's this skid, hook, and roll. So the reason why you leave a 10 pin is mainly because no, you did not get unlucky. There is no luck in bowling, remember that. It is purely physics and your ability to make good shots. So what really happened there was the ball got, in, got out of the skid phase and into the hook phase and then into the roll phase way too fast and it entered the pocket with not enough energy thus wrapping the tendon. Now what did you see on the second shot? On the second shot I inverted my hand and turned it inward a little bit and then kept it still all the way through my swing and then you saw how the tape went from in the middle to almost like on the side of the ball like that. So what, what you're seeing is a higher axis rotation and a little more tilt as well. So. The reason why the ball broke loose, and like you said, I mean, it almost left another single pin, the nine pin, because it had too much driving power. Now, on a, on a house shot, your ball is going to be a little less sensitive than it would be on a sports shot. So, getting back to the point of doing the right thing at the right time, uh, if you're almost leaving a nine pin, that might be a little too much rotation. But, you know, all you gotta do, you know, there's everywhere in between with your hand and getting the right angle of ball roll that you wanna have. So, as you saw, almost up to nine pin, the, the ball tape was on the side of the ball. And what that does is, to the, to the skid hook and roll on the ball, is it allows the ball to skid longer, 
it still gets into the hook phase, although the hook phase is a wee bit longer, and then the roll phase is a little bit shorter. Now, that allowed it to save a ton of energy. The more skid you have and the later the hook phase, the more the ball can hook overall and change direction. Now, that doesn't mean you should rotate it whenever, the, whenever you can't get your ball to hook. There are many different scenarios in how the oil is going to work. So getting your ball to hook properly is huge. So like on sport patterns, you have a lot more oil. Sometimes if your ball's not hooking enough or you're wrapping 10 pins, it's because you're not actually up the back of it enough. So it's definitely key. I want to make another video on this. You know, pay attention to the oil and what you need to do for adjustments. So getting into the second tip of general things that you know anybody can practice is being able to play the different parts of the lane. Now this one is easy. You can definitely do it no matter the skill level, two-handed, one-handed, uh, one finger, one foot, whatever, you, wh whatever your deal is. So being able to play the different parts of the lane. Now this is something you're going to have to kind of visualize a little bit until I show you, uh, show you me throwing the ball down the lane. Now when you're trying to play an angle that is a lot straighter, like the first arrow, the second arrow, even the third arrow, Generally, the consensus is you're, you're not going to throw the ball away from yourself, meaning it's not going to have the big belly. You're, you're only looking for your ball to hook a very minimal amount. So going back to the hand positions is something that you can build on this, is you want to try to be more like this with your hand. End over end roll is going to help you play straighter and more effectively. It's going to give you a little bit better carry when you're trying to play straighter as well. So now the next step to being able to play up the lane is you want your body pretty square, meaning you don't want to have your shoulders open. Open. The reason why you don't want that is because that allows you to throw the ball away from you. What you want to do is get your shoulders closed back down, make sure to have your ball with the shoulder, and when you go to push the ball away, keep it with your shoulder. And that way, it'll still clear your body, and you won't throw it left. But it will, it will greatly allow you to go much straighter and it will not the ball will not go further away from you it's great definitely need to learn how to use it i pulled 300s going straight up the lane and also curving the whole lane now a lot of people love to get the big hook so best thing you can do for that is when you're starting to play further parts of the lane like the like you know the third arrow it really depends on exactly where you're trying to go sometimes you can play pretty straight on it or curve it a lot. Now when you get the fourth, fifth, sixth arrows, you got to throw the ball away from you because if you throw it straight, it's just going to hook past the head pin. So when you're doing that, you want to adjust your hips to be open, you want to get your shoulder open, and you want to stay open all the way through the shot. Now you still have to readjust the ball to be with your shoulder. So if you're going to push away, it's still right next to your body, but this allows your swing to come up and it allows your shoulders to stay open like this and you'll be able to get the ball going out to the right. Now I'm going to throw a series of two shots. The first shot, I'm probably going to have to throw a plastic ball because I'm on a house shot and it hooks, it's hooking quite a bit right now. But you're going to see my body, for the most part, be pretty square and up towards the pins. Now when I throw the second shot, you're going to see my body open quite a bit and you're going to see the ball travel really far away from me. So I'm going to show you how to do both of them and some benefits on why or why not you should do that, I'll explain after the two shots. And I'll explain exactly what you saw. So, you're gonna see me line up pretty straight. I'm going to keep my shoulders pretty closed here. Keep the hips, as you can see, I'm kind of rotating a little bit. My, I mean, the shoulders have to be open just slightly, but now I'm adjusting the ball with my shoulder to try to keep it on the outside. Okay. So here I go, going straight. You're gonna see me get much further left, and it's just an exaggeration. You wanna be able to do it from all of the arrows. But now, my hips are coming open, shoulders are coming open. Obviously the ball's coming a little bit closer in, but notice it's staying right in front of my shoulder. It should always be right in front of your shoulder. So now, I'm going to throw that, and you can see the bottom of the hole. Recap. So, what did you
you guys just see about the shot that went really straight and the shot that went curved quite a bit. The major difference was the shoulders and the hips and how I was open with my shoulders and how I was closed with my shoulders. The first shot, I had very closed shoulders. As you can see, even though the ball still bellied a little bit, you can see how it was able to stay a lot straighter and handle that spot on the lane. Now, whenever I moved really far left, you saw my shoulders open quite a bit and at the point of release, they were still open. So, big takeaways from that is the further you move left, the more you gotta open up your body. The further you move right, the more you gotta close your body down. So, that's about how to play the different parts of the lane in a nutshell, it's a quick review. Now, if you guys really want me to, I can make another video specifically on just how to play the parts of the lane, and I can make another video on how to change your ball roll a lot more. So, thanks for watching. Greatly appreciate you guys, all the support. It's awesome. Uh, hit like and subscribe, that way you know whenever I make another video, and uh, I'll keep at it.